If you select a layer, you can choose one of the various um, layer blending modes. Some, depending on your image, some it looks like nothing happened. And it really depends on what image you have. And so I clicked on darken and nothing really happened. But when I click on multiply, it kind of blends the images together. And maybe I like the way the sky looks better, but in the statue I don't like that so much, but it, in the sky it kind of makes it pop and makes it more blue. You can click through and you can kind of see the different effects that happen here. Now this is one of the examples where if you just leave it at 100%, maybe it doesn't look so great, but if you slide the opacity down on a color burn, it kind of gives it a different effect or a different look to it. And you can click through. My favorite one is usually the overlay. It's not going to work on this image, I don't think, so much because it's going to kind of blow out the image or the sky at least. Um, but you can mess around with different overlay options. You can even create new layers um, that have a gradient or have a solid color on them. And so this is something I didn't demo in the lecture, so I'll do a gradient now. If you apply a gradient, so I grab the gradient tool on the tools panel, and I'm just going to click and drag. My gradient should be blue fading to white, and I knew that because here at the top of the screen, it's telling me that's the color of my gradient. And for now, you can just kind of click some of the presets, and you can click and drag to apply. Um, you can mess around with the settings here. You could choose to have a circular gradient instead of a um, linear gradient. And so if I pull from the middle, you'll see it as a circle. But if I fold from corner to corner, it kind of looks like an arc. And you can do different things. Um, but what's important is once you create a solid layer, it's all one color, or you use the gradient tool, you don't have to just block out the rest of your project. You could change the layer blending mode on layer one, and you could click through to see kind of what your options are. And so this is kind of stylized. It's pretty cool. Maybe you come back with your eraser tool, which we're going to learn so many better ways to do this, but for now I think this is approachable. You could come back on this layer and with those same settings, so I write the opacity set low and I have a feathered edge, I kind of click and I could add. My brush is probably too big for this, but you can add some of the texture back in for the face. And so, or maybe you just want it to look like there's a halo around that person. You can kind of combine the two and you'll see if I turn my background copy off that I basically just erase the image so you could see through it to the next one. Let's undo that. Okay, you don't have to use that blending mode, so you can click through and you can see what different things happen. Um, two of the ones that I think that um, are kind of easier to understand how they work are darken, or darker color and lighter color. And so right now we have a layer that's layer one. Let's move this up so they're together. And it has certain colors in it, right? It has purple, it has a pinky color, it has orange color. And then we have the background color. And everywhere a color sits, like right here, let's make that smaller, right here is purple and right there on the background layer is white and so if you were to say which color is darker or lighter the background copy has a lighter color and the gradient has a darker color and so if you change the layer blending mode on layer one to darker color or lighter color you'll notice that it keeps the darker or the lighter color and so right now it's keeping whatever color is darker um, from your layer one but if you change it to lighter it will keep whatever color is lighter and so um, it is keeping the lighter color between the two um, layers now that works really well if you have a grayscale or a black and white image but maybe not so well if you have the gradient you can also do an overlay where it lays the color right over the top this is another one where I like to lower the opacity and so you kind of get a tint to the image but maybe you don't have to have it be a solid gradient covering everything I really like to do this for uh, sunsets. And so if you have an image, I'm just going to quickly, I know this video is getting long. Um, I'm going to go to search.creativecommons.org, use Google Images, and I'm going to search for, I don't know, beach. But I'm specifically not going to pick an image that already has a sunset. And so let's see what image might be good. I don't want to choose one that has clouds either. Let's do this guy here. So I'm just going to grab this image really quickly, make sure it's the biggest it can be, drag it and drop it to my desktop, and then I'm going to open it in Photoshop. So 
So this image is cool. Maybe it's exactly what I need for my project, but I want it to be a night scene. I want it to be um, a sunset. And so what I can do is I can create two or more new layers. And maybe one is going to be the foreground and one is going to be the background. And you can make a selection, let's say on the background layer, the sky. And I'm going to fill this selection with a gradient. So if I grab my gradient tool and I apply it with a gradient, I probably want to use a linear gradient for the sky. And you can choose whatever colors you want. You can then use your layer blending modes. It doesn't matter if it's selected anymore. If you change it to overlay, it's going to overlay the colors onto the, the sunset. Now this one might not be so great because um, it still looks like it's daytime, but it's pretty. It's putting, you can see the difference, it's putting the color into it. But you can click through and you can try different options that might give you different results. And one of the options that it's going to work is either hue or saturation. And hue's not working, but um, not, not saturation, hue or color. But color tends to work. Color tends to make it look um, more like it's the sky. And you can, you can click through and you can, whoops, that was not the best option. You can even do darken. You can do different things. Maybe multiply would be a good one um, to make the sky look like it's the right color. And what I would actually do is I'd probably use color down here, but it's still too light, or even overlay. And I would combine that with some other features to make it look darker. You could even try to make it look like it's like sunrise or, or just before sunset. Um, you can do it twice too. You don't have to just do it for the top. You could, whoops, I want to make a selection there. You can select the bottom half of the image and maybe you can reverse the, the direction of the gradient. So if I grab the gradient tool, I believe I drug from top to bottom. And so I'm going to drag from bottom to top here and I'm going to apply the same gradient. But now when I push the overlay on it, it's going to give a different effect. And you probably want to take a little bit more time. Um, see how the orange worked a lot better than the purple? You don't have to leave it like that. You could reselect your gradient. And with the overlay set, you can click and drag as many times as you want. I don't have to start at the bottom. I could start out here, and I could drag to here, and I could get more orange in the image. I could start and drag past it to get different looks. And then all you want to do is make sure that you're doing that for both of the images. And maybe you don't even need to do that as a foreground and a background. Maybe you find that for your purposes, let's do overlay, that you're just going to click and drag your gradient until you get the result that you're looking for. And maybe you want all orange. And so you drive to that setting. I think it will still need some work. That one might work. The, the bottom half looks like it's almost sunset. It might need a little bit of work based on how my colors are interacting with the sky, but you don't even have to stick with those colors. You could try different colors and see how they work with the sky that you're choosing. This sky is really bright, so it's kind of hard to, to line up the colors that you might want. Maybe you're going to apply. That kind of looks cool. kind of looks trippy. You're just trying to make it look washed out or beach-like. Okay, I'm going to stop rambling. Um, in this video, we talked about the effects that you can apply, and you just have to know they exist right now and that you could click on the effects button to add them. I'm not expecting you to know all the settings at this point. You should know how to change the opacity of a layer and that you should know that layer blending modes affect the way that a layer blends with the other layers. And so the example that we used, I think the better example would be to kind of play around with two layers or affect the way that um, that a filter or something would kind of distort an image. You could blend it with the original either through opacity or through the layer blending modes.